It's an old story. A kid drops out of high school. He checks out the job market, only to find without a good education and basic skills, he can only get the most menial work, if he can get a job at all. He gets frustrated with potential employers, society, his family, and himself. More often than not, he hangs around with other kids who are just as frustrated with life. The prospects are bleak and sometimes dangerous, and the situation looks hopeless. We have been given the opportunity to select various agencies, service providers who are working in cooperation with this whole effort. Uh, I feel that there are a number of services that can help young people develop their highest potential. Uh, as you know, we have educational services, health services, employment training services, recreation services. I maintain that the problem is that these services are uncoordinated and our overall effort in citizen schools basically is to coordinate the existing resources. Bring those resources where the young people are uh, through the people in the agency resources so they can be available to the young people to help them alleviate problems that they usually take in the classroom. My name is Thomas Blake. I'm a graduate of Central slash Riches Academy. Thank you. My name is Latonya Gates Boston. Um, <clears throat> I went to St. Luke's Academy and I was class of 93. Um, my name is Reginald Beatty. I am a graduate of Atlanta Street Academy T, uh, the graduating class of 1976. My name is Sarita Watley Henderson. I graduated from Reaches Academy, class of 1991. Okay, Tony Owens uh, started with Smithers in schools back in, well, let me take that back, started with Exodus back in 1991. Uh, started out, uh, I met Joyce Stafford back in 1991, started out as a a program coordinator at Southside uh, High School and moved from there, uh, met Dave Lewis and uh, started traveling with the Exeter players and thought that was like the best job in the world because I didn't do any work, I just traveled with them and I monitored and watched them while Dave did the things that he needed to do. Hello, my name is Venicia Marshall Wright. I am a graduate of St. Luke's Academy Salutatorian class of 1993. I'm Marcy Morse. I went to Riches Academy. I graduated in 1991, class of 91. The situation is not hopeless. The cycle can and is being broken, thanks to cities and schools and exodus. Wow. If I could describe uh, my life prior to uh, Exodus Street Academy and now communities and schools, it would be um, I was lifeless, and what I mean by that is I had dropped out of school, or more importantly, had been expelled from all schools in Atlanta, Georgia uh, for fighting, nothing I'm proud of, but fighting one of my coaches, one of my teachers at uh, Harper High School, and as a result of fighting in the ninth grade, I was in the streets hustling, had been in and out of the juvenile justice system three different occasions uh, for burglarizing, and stealing, robbing, selling drugs, uh, different things, and obviously uh, the youngest son of my mother obviously causing her havoc and obviously pain and not knowing whether her son was dead, locked up, or where at times coming home or not coming home for weeks at a time. What brought me to the program? Well, I had been put out of um, the Cap County schools and wasn't doing anything, staying at home every day. And my grandmother called and said she wanted to take me to a, a YAC conference. And came to the YAC conference, and I was like, this is this not me. I'm going back home. So the next day she said, well, when you went to the YAC conference, we're going to take you down to St. Luke's. I'm like, what is St. Luke's? Got down to St. Luke's, and um, I was like, this is definitely like not me. And I ended up registering and starting in next week. Came to the, well, before the program, I was on a, what you call a, spiral of destruction. Um, my mom, you know, the house burnt down several years back and we had to move into the government projects and those particular projects was East Lake Meadows. Uh, currently now, a golf course, which um, I'm so glad that they done something with those particular projects. But nevertheless, um, didn't have no real direction. My father had passed recently 
uh, prior to us moving into East Lake Meadows um, due to uh, intravenous drug use. Uh, um, he died of AIDS. And my mother really didn't have no real control over uh, myself and my three siblings uh, due to the fact that she had to work pretty much 10 to 12 hour days just trying to provide for us. Uh, with her lack of education, we just kind of, you know, went through school and did whatever we could do to survive. And um, every day, pretty much while she was at work uh, praying for us, I was pretty much out on the streets doing whatever, you know. And, Stories just went in and out of her ears from uh, local community people trying their best to get a hold of me. And my brother and my sister was pretty much on the right track, but I just, for some reason, just decided to take the uh, left road versus the right road. Before I came to the program, I suffered from depression, and I was also a victim of sexual abuse. And so I would go, I, for about a year or two, I planned on committing suicide. And I would just collect pills from wherever I could and when I got to 100 I was going to uh, take them. And I didn't have that bag of pills when I did attempt suicide but I did have some sleeping pills. I took the pills. I ended up in Georgia Regional uh, Hospital for six months and when I left there I really didn't know where I was going to go. I didn't want to go back to a regular high school setting and I had an aunt named Rita Young who worked at Riches Academy and she invited me up there. And I was concerned about the size of the class and what kind of school it was. I thought it was a school for bad kids. And, but I went anyway. Uh, I like to say that I, I guess I, I, I'm not a student of the program. I'm a student of the process. I watched Dave Lewis uh, create the process of working with young people. I watched how he carved and maneuvered and taught young people how to have the confidence that they needed to do. And from that, I learned how to do some of the same things that Dave Lewis was working with young people and transform them into uh, what my life is all about now. I do some of those same things as it relates to the young people that I'm working with and some of the programs that we're working with. Uh, my life before uh, my encounter with uh, David Lewis and the Exodus players, oh my goodness, uh, I really don't know where to begin. Um, if I had to use a few adjectives to describe um, how my life was before my uh, experience or my Dave Lewis Exodus Players experience. I would say hopeless. Um, oh my goodness. Um, impossible. Um, downtrodden. Um, yeah, it was, it was very um, uninspiring. Uh, uh, a lot of strenuous uh, experiences, a lot of uh, a lot of heartache, and yeah. Um, it's really cold. What did he have? Who? Who is this? That was before us. Yeah, I know. It's been the rhyme song. We got some Cities and Schools provides the learning environment offered in any high school. The academic goal is a high school diploma. English and math are taught alongside classes in family planning, employment training, and computer training. But what makes these former dropouts eagerly attend the Exodus programs? It's not like a regular high school. I mean, we get everything the regular high school students get, but it's like a family environment. It's like a lot of love going around. People care about you, and you, it makes you want to do something. You feel motivated. You feel like you, you want to do something, like you want to achieve things in life. Uh, encounter with Dave Lewis. They took me directly to his office, and I, I had the opportunity to meet uh, this statue of a man that I now, although he's passed, but I now consider him my second earthly father. And when I met him, uh, didn't understand what it was that he wanted from me, but he asked me to stand up. He asked me to say my name, my full name. He asked me to look him in the eye. He asked me to uh, address him as somebody. And that was the first time that I really looked up and 
and I'm not a tall person. I'm about five six, and this gentleman stood about six foot three, six foot four. And I had to look up and look up at this gentleman, look him in the eye, and at that exact moment, I had to um, pretty much let this man know that I really want to be back in school. My mother stood beside me and, because he wasn't going to accept me. He felt that you know, at the time, with everything that I had on the table and what was in black and white, according to the police reports and everything that they just said about me. Um, if you read it, you probably would assume that this young man was just a minister to society. And um, was he going to get his life back on track? Um, it was a gamble. And he asked me, young man, do you want to be in school? And he said, look at me. Don't, you know? And I, I looked up at him. And for some reason, I, the connection was at that exact moment, we became uh, almost inseparable in terms of uh, my day-to-day -day operation in school. I accepted his challenge and said, yes, I want to be in school. My mother broke out in tears. I broke out in tears. I didn't, didn't understand the emotional moment at the time. And I wanted, to, uh, I wanted to do better. I wanted to do right. But just didn't have a father figure in my life. And Mr. Uh, Mr. Lewis decided to say that um, if you can get up every day, get yourself here, I'll do my best to make sure that uh, I'll do whatever it takes to make sure that you succeed and that you graduate from high school. And I took that challenge. I think the caring and the sharing and that we have with the student, uh, we go beyond the classroom. Uh, we go into the home. Uh, if the child needs something that is not in the home, we try to provide that. Because if the child is unhappy or having problems, she, can, she or he cannot function in the classroom. I, I like to say in terms of how the program impacted me, this was the first time in my uh, life that I've been around, I like to say, first of all, two men, but then the staff were people who genuinely did not judge me from where I came from and then all the things that I had done. And the entire school was, well, at that time, I'd say some people would have labeled us as misfits. And what I mean by that, how it changed us, Everybody at the school I was in, for the most part that I remember, had been teen mothers. Uh, the guys had been in and out of the juvenile justice system, uh, in and out of jail, uh, hustling, just doing nothing with their lives. And yet we had no metal detectors, but I don't recall ever having one fight in the two years that I was at uh, Street Academy T because of the environment was, they made us, you know, we thought that maybe we had some things going on with our lives in terms, but we didn't show it based on our action. But they made us not only think that we, that we were smart, they made us realize, and they were all about our talents as opposed to judging us. So uh, initially, I had a distrust of everybody, uh, especially adults, because around the environment that I had seen, I hadn't seen, except for my mother, and a few other mothers, I hadn't seen a lot of positive people who were doing a lot of positive things with their lives because everybody was about hustling and getting over on each other. But there, uh, it became more of a family environment and also when I say talent identification, uh, not just of the arts, but academically, they just stayed with us and made us feel really good about ourselves. And after, as a result, initially I came sparingly just here and there, but after being there, I think after the first month, I never want to miss another day of school, and, and we would stay after school, and, and for me, uh, that dedication, and as a result of that, I just stopped doing drugs, selling drugs, I stopped hustling, I stopped doing all the things that I was doing that was destructive, and so to say how it, what happened afterwards, uh, the teachers, the staff, Dave, Bobby, uh, they just really just made us feel like we were the most important people in the world. And I think giving us that confidence, it made us then go out and just want to do more for ourselves. The Exodus players are an elite group of students procured from five Exodus cities and schools and Atlanta program under the direction of the musical genius of alumni students, Mr. Michael Nesby, and the theatrical leadership of Ms. Peggy Brewster Martin. The group will warm for you this evening, realizing the dream, the Exodus story. A saga depicting the life and advancements of those young people 
whose dreams were almost destroyed by an egotistical society and were revealed through the love of Exodus. We as young people of today have problems, but they aren't going away. We must develop our dreams. We must keep fighting. But how can we fight without your help? Can't you understand? We aren't going away. Remember, we just keep coming. We keep coming. Well, I work with children as a result of uh, just the positive impact that the program had on me and the people in the program had on me. I actually uh, am a director of a program working with children and also I am um, co-founder of a nonprofit that is centered around the arts that is geared towards at-risk kids or at-risk youth um, like I was. Uh, Exodus Players allowed me a avenue to express myself creatively and to heal through uh, singing and theatrics and drama and so uh, I have a program that that where we're doing the same thing and it's a direct result of the impact that the program had on me. My life today is what it is largely because of Dave Lewis and Exodus and Communities and Schools. I became a playwright. I've written three plays, two of them at the 14th Street Playhouse. The very first play we did, I wrote for, to do in front of the organization and at the high school. And they knew that we're going to Peak Street, we're going to 14th Street Playhouse, and we did. And we were, here we were, a bunch of at-risk students coming from all types of places uh, considered the gutter projects and low-income areas. And here we were organizing from the ground up a play. We did the marketing, we, the students in the play were all from the organization. Um, it was totally unbelievable and we put on a sold out show. That's because he believed in us, that's because Ms. Martin believed in us, that's because the students were talented and they believed in themselves. And from there, I became a playwright. And that's, that's my dream and that's what I, I live. And I also, <clears throat> use the lessons that I gained from the organization with my children. You know, I teach my children to believe in themselves, to not let any circumstance or anyone else define them. Only they can do that. I teach them that they can do whatever they want to do. Everything that Dave Lewis gave to me, I passed down to them because what he gave me was priceless. What happened after the program? I, I'm lighting up because uh, obviously I say that they changed or saved my life. But then I, when I say they changed my life, uh, after graduating in 1976 from one of the earlier street academies, um, I graduated at 16, turned 17, uh, and as a result of turning 17, I was supposed to graduate from high school in 1977, but after being out of school for two years, I actually graduated from high school a year before my graduating class. And, they completed the only application to go to college uh, with my mother, who I, I didn't come from a college-going uh, family. Uh, I'm a, I was actually the first college graduate. And they completed the first application, the only application, uh, with a recruiter, with my mom, made my mom feel so comfortable. And they took me to the bus stop. And i never remember, forget that they put me on a bus, a Greyhound bus, uh, Two months after graduating from Street Academy T, uh, they sent me to Stillman College. And as a result of being at Stillman College, that's when I think my life changed completely when I realized uh, that there was more out there for me than, again, uh, my picture was up at the rent office in Bankhead Court as the first college graduate to, in that community. And just looking back how it changed me, as a result of being there, um, I ended up graduating from undergraduate, graduating with a master's degree from T Middle Tennessee State University, uh, selected as the best instructor in the nation for all colleges and universities, uh, got a scholarship from the United States Army, and uh, retired as a colonel, commanded a field artillery battalion of 2,000 soldiers, and who would have thought that someone who had gone through those situations and circumstances uh, came back and led the team to you know, that started 
a statewide program through communities and schools and ultimately came back to the organization that saved my life and ended up running the statewide organization as its chief operating officer along with Neil as its president uh, for a number of years. And so when I say how did it save my life, change my life and life afterwards, I can go on and on. But when I look at those accolades, it wasn't because of anything that I did. It was because of Bobby Gary, Dave Lewis, the Neil Shorehouses of the world that actually impacted and changed my life. And as a result, uh, I'm in the kids business as a result of the impact and what that they made on my life. Um, well, um, for me, I am actually the first of my family, my immediate family to graduate. And this is my daughter. Um, my daughter, her name is Dion Dowell. Dion is a senior at Albany State. She's a psychology major. She graduated um, with honors from Cedar Grove High School. Um, so this is a product, just as I'm a product of Exodus and Cities and Schools, this is a product of Exodus and Cities and Schools because had I not received what I received, then she would just we don't know. We don't know what would have happened. So I think um, everything that I got from Exodus and Citizen School was good stuff. It was good stuff. Um, they said that we, they said that I wouldn't make it. <laughs> they lied. They said that I would probably be dead by the time that I was 22. They lie. So don't let no one control your life. Take control of your own life. Take control of your destiny. I went from the street corner to the corner office. And that's because I believed in myself. And I didn't accept no for an answer. Um, Uncle Dave, Uncle Dave, the program itself, Neil, <laughs> I love Neil, um, and the, the Exodus players, all the staff, everyone, you know, involved. Um, my life then and now, I mean, my uncle would be proud of me. <laughs> and so, <laughs> he would be proud of me because I, I heard him. And I heard, you know, I heard him speaking, not just to me, but um, when he spoke to the students. I mean, my uncle just had a way of, you know, making people do. I mean, and this is the beginning of a new era, I think. That, and I hope that something you think about coming back, doing some of the things for other people as we go. Otherwise, it's no good. You know, I know that uh, my time is not that long to be able to do this, but all I can, I can count on is the fact that you all will be like Jonathan. Once you reach that peak, then you go back and uh, teach somebody.